we can casually go into cool. it. But, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready to start. Uh, <laughs> sure. I just, um, oh, Greg says he just put his one year old down. Yeah, my two year old is watching uh, Sesame Street. So um, <laughs> yeah, he actually busted in yesterday. We did a WNYC in New York, great NPR station. Uh, did a thing with them and uh, <laughs> does he got his he got his first NPR cameo. Because uh, he kind of burst into the room and and uh, he wanted a, a fruit pouch. So, uh, anyways, it was it was the, the host did a pretty graceful job of, uh, of uh, you know like giving me thirty seconds and while I uh, took off <laughs> into the kitchen into the kitchen with him. But um, I think I made the mistake of uh, I had I put the TV kind of quiet because I didn't want the sound to bleed into the NPR feed, you know. But but actually, I think that's why he came in. He heard my voice. And he was like, you know, came in here. But anyways, um, I think we're we're safe uh, between me, Greg, uh, Jim. Your kids might burst in. Hey, yeah, they're not around. <laughs> okay, there, and there's Zach Shields, our, our amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing cinematographer. Great to see you, brother. Um, Indianapolis native. Uh, I was actually introduced to you by Jim uh, here from Big Car. So, um, she, she was calling me right now. Let me see if I can see where, where she's where she's jumping on or not. Hold on one second. Cool. So, should we just maybe do a quick welcome while he's yeah. trying to loop them in? Kick it off, Louise, and I'll take it uh, take it from there. Sounds good. So, welcome to everyone who's joining us this evening. I know virtual events is not what we want to do uh, after a day on screens, but you know this was an opportunity that we couldn't pass by. So, we are so delighted that after premiering in Indianapolis at the Heartland Film Festival yeah, in 2019, 17 Blocks is finally getting its distribution debut. We are featuring it on our on-demand service available through cancanindy.com. I think I failed to say, my name is Louise Henderson. I am with the CanCan. I'm executive director of the Indianapolis Film Project, which is the nonprofit that powers oh. the CanCan Cinema. And we're just really thrilled to have everyone here. So I'll hand it off to Daniel and our director of programming and, and take it from there. Thanks everyone so much for coming tonight and for supporting the Can Can and independent film. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Daniel. I'm the programming director, and I, uh, like Louise, saw this film at the at Heartland at the Indianapolis premiere. And um, when I saw this film was getting put put in on demand, I knew we instantly had to show this film because of how important it is. But I also have a history with this film because um, I do know Zach from my past life. And actually I got a professional, my first professional gig working in the filmmaking community was with help of Zach. So I owe him that. But uh, um, I was out at Sundance in 2018 and Zach was actually premiering a movie he helped shoot. And so Zach was like, hey, you should come come afterwards. We should uh, hang, hang out with us. And I did and then Davey was there. So I met this Davey character who we knew a lot of the same people. And he mentioned this film he's been working on and that he would be loved to show at the Can Can whenever it opened, but he's been working on this film for 10 years. And I was like, you've been working on this film for over 10 years. He's like, yeah. I was like, what is it? He's like, hold, well, I'll hold, I won't tell you everything yet, but um, you'll just have to wait to see what happens. And I could not be more excited to see it. And so um, it blew me away when I saw it. And so now I'm so happy we're here. And then um, also I, when I reached out to him to do this Q&A, he mentioned Big Car and Jim, you guys actually had somewhat of a role. So I thought what better to get Jim, Zach and Davey all together to talk about this film, how it was made, how it came to be. So without further ado, um, do you guys wanna just go around and introduce yourselves and then kick it off? Sure, who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go. I'm, I'm Zach Shields. I, I shot some of the film with Davey over, over a four or five year period. And Zach, you're from Indianapolis and where are you now? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an indie native sort of. And uh, I, uh, yeah, so this is a, a family gathering because I, you and I worked together for a long time when I started doing some big car stuff. Um, but I'm actually in Hawaii currently at this moment, uh, having some, uh, having some family time. Nice. 
and uh and i'll say you know that the film spans 20 years uh we're just waiting for cheryl sanford who's the the main subject and collaborator of the film she's trying to jump on um i gave her the passcode that i was sent to the zoom so maybe if the same one works for her um we'll see um but uh you know we started filming in 1999 um the film center and we've been filming for the last 20 years uh you know the film most of it occupies like 1999 2009 and 2010 and then like 2015 to 2019 so that's the period that zach was uh was there with us and you know it's really the second half of the movie but it's such beautiful uh cinematography and and we're and we're lucky yeah that jim walker and big car were the ones to not, not only introduce me to zach and he came on to our last film about the indiana high school basketball team adora uh, zach helped out with that one and and uh and then we recruited him to to help us with 17 blocks but 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 jim and and and, and big car have been really instrumental in in helping us um be able, you know be able to put it together in order to like raise the money we needed to and other to really make this film that's already having a big impact in the world as well as our summer camping trips that we do with the Sanfords and, and Cheryl and I and Zach can tell you more about that in a little bit but Washington to Washington our annual trips big car has been big supporters of that and, and really helpful as we shape our annual trips so anyway it's really exciting me to have this group of people together and Jim I didn't let you to introduce yourself Oh, that's fine. Uh, thank you, Davey. Uh, yeah, I'm Jim Walker. I'm executive director of Big Car Collaborative. Uh, one of the ways that we, we are based in the Garfield Park neighborhood here in Indianapolis, we started in Fountain Square. And one of the things that we used to do, maybe one of the, the biggest nights of our Fountain Square uh, time was a, a post secret and, and found a magazine we're touring together. And if you know about Post Secret, that's the one where you may, people would mail in these, these secrets on postcards that they made. So that was like this double bill and Davey was there and we had a, a we packed this tiny room and uh, we used to bring, figure out all the ways we could to get Davey to come and present uh, found magazine pieces. And then that, so that was kind of what Big Car was like at that point. And so now we do a lot of co collaborations and support a lot of different things the best we can. And um, we were really interested in, in the idea of, of cross genre kind of work. So film has always been a big part of it and it's important and has been important. And Zach was really instrumental for us in terms of sharing our work because a lot of it is very much like the things that Davey has captured through his, his career that if you don't capture them on video or audio, then there, you know, people can't experience it really because it's something that just happens in the moment. So that's been something that's been very valuable. And Daniel helps with that kind of stuff with us and has over the years. So there's been a whole line of folks who've, who've supported it. And a, another guy named Kurt Nettleton who came after uh, Zach. So I, I thought maybe while we're, we're figuring out things with Cheryl, we could start out with a question that sort of starts at the end and that's kind of how you guys how zach there's a when you watch the film you see this this um not only this this time that passes with everybody growing up and everything but you also see this passage of time in terms of technology cameras and video and then zach you can tell when zach comes along and when when you started to get the, the different equipment and it 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 changes a little bit of the tone but it, it really feels like it fits with the story. And I wondered if you guys could talk about how that worked and, and the decisions you made in terms of that, Davey, and also, you know, how it, how Zach, you got involved in how this worked for you when you, when you stepped in towards the last quarter of this uh, 20 year uh, project. Zach, let me, let me, let me launch this. And then I think I, cause I was thinking about this today, actually. So, you know, I met the Sanfords in 99, just to pick up basketball game at a court in southeast dc i met smurf he was 15 his brother emmanuel was nine they were cool kids we we got along and they invited me home to dinner one day and i met their mom cheryl their sister denise and uh, we just became friends you know i started going there almost every night um, i was i was really in need of some family i was far from home and a little lost and and the sanfords took me in cheryl likes to say that they adopted me which, which is really kind of how it felt um and and I had a video camera. I was just interested in filmmaking, but had never really made anything or experimented much. And 
and I was learning to use it. And so the kids started learning to use it with me. And, and we started filming just all the time around the neighborhood and at the apartment. And so that's, you know, a lot of the film that you see is was shot by these not you know then kids you know age nine even Emmanuel was nine years old and and he started filming a lot of it himself but you know years later after 10 years of filming that the, you know obviously the story takes a turn and that's when it we realized it wasn't just home videos we really had like a, a movie on our hands to and we could tell a very important story um and at that point you know uh when Zach got involved it was kind of like although we we had passed the camera around we're we're really our amateurs and we we needed like a real artist like somebody who actually can handle a, a camera like a true pro and 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 but also someone with special qualities to sort of just be able to be in any situation and get along with people and and you know be quickly at ease hi Cheryl I can hi hear I don't understand why I see my profile picture Okay, well, you might have to, someone might have to do, let me see if I can do, in, like, uh, invite you to share your video. That'll probably help. I did that. It's just not doing like we've been doing. Uh-oh. Uh, we're set, training some changes some settings. Or... Yeah, we'll see you in a second. I, I'm Cheryl, I'm telling the story of how, Zach, I'm leading I, into. I'm, I can hear you clearly, but I just, now I can't see you. Okay, hold on a second. I think, let me see. So now see here um is there a way to invite her to share her video i can usually do it when i'm the host but i'm, I'm not hosting this one god i can do that tell her to hop back on because i think we yes lost it. cheryl if you hop back on is she still there she's she might have just jumped off and she'll jump back on but but zach i feel like the experience i had in 1999 with the family kind of just like adopting me and bringing me in to their lives in a real deep way. I feel like you had that very, a very similar, almost identical experience. I'm, I'm curious to hear how it was from your perspective, like, but 15 years later, when you first met them, I yeah. feel like, and then part, and part of it, go ahead. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's not, it's not normal to come into a project, you know, with 15 years of uh, like relationship and basically Davey being a part of the family and it being this homegrown thing. And then coming in with all of that history was definitely unique. It's unique to have a 20 year, a documentary that spans 20 years, but it's, but coming in at kind of like the, the tail end, usually five years of filming is not considered like the smaller fraction or the tail end. But when I, when I, uh, so it was kind of, when I came in, it was already, it was, it was a different because it was kind of like meeting Davy's friends. It wasn't, you know, friends and family, it was, so it was kind of, I was welcomed as family and there wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't kind of a, we could just hit, you know, start filming and they had already been filming themselves and had cameras for 15 years. So it was an easy thing to kind of, to kind of jump in. And, and then it was just a matter of kind of, it wasn't, it was more like hanging out and then filming when things, you know, whenever we felt like filming and, uh, Hey Cheryl. She's on mute. Oh. Hi, Zach. How are you? I'm good. How are you? It's unmuted. Yeah, we it's can great. hear you now. Hi, thank you. All right. It's great. Took me long enough. <laughs> Cheryl, I, I want Jack's talking about um, you know, I how I met you guys in '99, and I was talking about how just how welcoming you were from the first night I ever came to your house, and you treated me like family, and and and, and inviting me back the next night and and every night after that I, I i was saying that zach i feel like had kind of a similar experience when he first met you and the family like he quickly became you quickly adopted him in the way in the way, same way you adopted me i feel like yes yes it's just you know that's the way i am with people people are people i don't you know i just recognize good hearts when i see them did you hear me yeah, that's nice. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Well, Zach does have a good heart, and so um, he's, 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 he's easy to like. Heart. Well, thank you, thank you. He's he's like, and well, Cheryl, I want to introduce you also here to uh, Jim Walker. He he's the guy I've told you about at, at Big Car, who has been one of the guys who is basically the, the Big Car is the amazing nonprofit organization that 
um, has been our nonprofit sponsor for our Washington and Washington trips, which we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. And, and also for the film itself. So that allowed us to, for example, when we received grants, you know, we were able to work with Big Car to, so we, we could get those grants and use them to, to make this okay. movie. And, okay. and, and, and Daniel is, is, uh, runs Can Can Theater in Indianapolis, uh, Zach's hometown, and, and has been sharing this film widely with, uh, with his audiences. Uh, so um, anyways, yeah, we just started uh, talking about, about the process. Jim, Jim was asking about you know, how, how Zach got involved. I was trying to remember when we met, Cheryl. I don't even know. It's all a, a blur now. I don't actually remember when we met or when, when kind of the, uh, I the, don't either. the the modern footage started. You, um, you, you just had came along with Davey. You know, Davey came to visit and you, you had your camera. You came along to visit with him and you, Davey asked me if I minded him, you doing the filming because you were getting how did he tell me you were getting your experience you were getting you know just doing it to get more experience or whatever and um sure <laughs> we loved it we just loved you know because we got so used to Davey filming us you know and um initially like I said it was my they were going to be my memories my home videos because I didn't have a camera but um I, like I said, I always wanted to be a star, so that he was giving my my own private movie, you know, making me my own private star. So I didn't mind at all. And then, then we just got to be family. Everybody just got to be family. I think that speaks to your big heart, really, Cheryl, and, and, and the rest of your family. But but I also feel like, you know, it helped. Zach lived in D.C. You know, he didn't live too far from you. So that was a big difference too. I used to come, you know, a couple times a year and visit and we would do some filming, but, but was Zach living so close? Once he came over a couple times with me, uh, soon he was just coming over by himself by and, himself, yeah. and hanging out with Justin and Faith and, you know, he the whole so many, taking them to museums and doing so many wonderful things, you know, so I felt like they were, that was their uncle that they didn't have. Just, just like you know, me, just like me, Zach. Uncle. Zach did some filming, but also, you know, filming was just one thing among many that he was doing with fam with members of the family. So he was doing other activities too, where without oh, the camera. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's more, I, I would say it's more of a friendship, a deep friendship and family, like like family. And then the filming is like an extent, extension of that, you know, it's a, a part of it. Yeah. 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 I, think, yeah. I think as, as time yeah. went on. Because um, there came times more. when Justin needed him at school. I'm sorry, there came time when Justin needed him, wanted him at school and um, Zach went right along, went, went with no problem. And I mean, I know it made Justin feel like big guy, you know, big guy at school, you know, but um, <laughs> like I said, yeah, he, he immediately became, you immediately became family. You know, you were never hesitant to, to help and do things that, for, for the kids or for me for that matter. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was, it was after a while, it wasn't really hanging out was the priority, and then the uh, the filming was just kind of like you know we had uh, had to remind yourself oh we should shoot a couple shoot a couple of these things or or, or you guys or or you know Justin yeah. would sometimes Justin would have an idea or or something would be happening and Faith would say hey film me or you know it was all just kind of it, it wasn't it wasn't a shoot it was hanging out with with some cameras around yeah mm -hmm. that's a good way to put it there mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and a lot and a lot of the times there'd be there'd be uh, uh, you know, there'd be six months, six months between you know between between shooting, um, where it would be oh, yeah. kind of like at some point something would happen and then we'd shoot shoot one thing for a day or just a, an hour or a moment or you know just like for a, a couple seconds here here or there and it was just all kind of organic and. and it, you know, probably at least after a while, it, it maybe the first couple were, you know, shooting felt more like we were shooting something. But then after a while, it was probably more like Davey, Davey and you guys back in the day hanging out, getting random stuff. Yeah, because I had this idea. You remember I wanted to produce a um, dance show, remember? And I asked you about that. Um, so it was, it was always something going on. We always had something going on. 
Yeah, if there was something like a birthday party or you yeah. know some some reason something of that seemed like a special significance to pull out the camera and make sure to get some footage of it. Yeah. Um, court a Smurfs Smurfs court dates stuff like that. You know, we'd be like, okay, this is pretty. I have, yeah, you all did that. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, for example, if there was something yeah. that seemed. But he reached the, uh, he reached out to you as a big brother, and you came right along and stood in there. So. Yeah. It was it was great. You know. It was a relief to have someone to help, you know, you know, because there were people who were missing and you two have filled those areas in a lot of ways. So. Well, well, it's been our, our joy to, um, how, how has it been feeling, Cheryl, you know, the film now it's been out for six days, you know, um, people are, are starting to see it. And I, I need to forward you some of the messages I've been getting from some from friends and, and others from just random strangers who are seeing the film and sending these beautiful messages. What you, have people you been hearing? Are, people who I haven't seen in 10 years are calling me like we're best friends all of a sudden. <laughs> we're <laughs> best friends and you know what their motive is. Oh, that's gonna, that is, they, they've given me plenty of compliments on, on the movie and how, how it hit, hit them and everything. But then they always seem to get you, um, it's gonna make a lot of money. <laughs> and you know like inquisitive you know but um you know i had a girlfriend tonight called me and yeah she was one of my best friends and she called me and she said she posted something on her facebook page that um i was so brave to do that and that she wants um everybody to show it to their children because they need to see it you know so those those kind of things feel good because the purpose has been met yeah yeah no I, I i agree some of the most moving messages i've seen are from people who who have their lives have maybe been touched by gun violence or or even if if not if not personally they they are living in neighborhoods where you know they're they're, they're facing a lot of the same challenges you and your family have faced over the years just you mm -hmm. know regarding like unjust sentencing laws or just you know schools that are you know are not really functioning adequately you know and uh and and just people have said like that your journey um, is really articulating their own experience in a way that's really meaningful to them. And so that's I think that's why people are so grateful to you, and 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 Smurf and Denise, Justin, you know, for for sharing your stories so intimately. Um, and 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 then and then on the other side of it is I I was talking to this this NPR folks earlier today, and and they said you know the guy said I, he said I grew up with a life of not, not extreme privilege, but he said we were a very affluent community where, where he was from, uh, I think in New Hampshire. And he said, you know, he said, I've, you know, he's like, I know what happens in, in cities. I, I know that there's a scourge of gun violence, but he said, he said, I never felt like, you know, I, I, I never, it had never really hit my heart before, you know, like, it's just a statistic. It's hard to really wrap my head right. around. Right. And then he, he yeah. said, I feel like the Sanfords, he said, like, I feel like they're my family too. And now that I've seen <laughs> them grow and, and, go through life's ups and downs like you know he said like I feel like this happened to my family you know and so I think that that was really beautiful for me to hear too mm -hmm. but, but he but mm -hmm. he credited it's you he said it's because you know everyone marvels that you were willing to share you know your life and and your family's life in such intimate detail I, I my my thoughts on that is that I think I grew up in a well-rounded situation okay I, I went to private school etc cetera, etc cetera. and 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 these things happen to me is you know it's life but I just wanted to make sure that maybe some other young lady out there that goes to, that goes to private school and thinks that the world is you know just hunky dory <laughs> that um you know these things happen to everybody you, you know it's it can happen to anyone and you know, maybe this will help them to prevent making some of those choices or going with the wrong path or, or the wrong people who, you know, some of those people, you know, are squeaky clean, but underneath, you know, they're the worst people in the world, you know? So, you know, I was just hoping that, you know, everybody could really see these things happen and how they can happen. And it just doesn't happen because that's, the life you really, you know, that you're just, that's a, you know, you choose to live that way all the time. You know, that's, you know, like your parents live that way, your parents, people live that way. No, no, it's, it, you know, 
it, it, it's diverse, you know, it's diverse, it happens. Mm -hmm. And it can happen to anyone, you know, that's the sad part, you know, and people, yeah. you know, no surprises, you know, so don't be surprised because it can happen. Just like the current pandemic, you know, like gun violence and, and you know, isn't, you know, it, it can touch, you know, uh, an, an affluent high school in Miami, you know, like we saw with Parkland, you know, it's like, um, it's not, it's not unique to urban neighborhoods. Um, no, no. And so you and, and people, yeah, you're, I think you're right to make that point that people would, 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 they'd be foolish to imagine that they're like perfectly insulated from it just because of where yeah. they live. You know, um, I don't know if this will have any relevancy whatsoever, but, um, in 1972 is when I came out of high school. And my first uh, interaction or knowledge of gun violence was always the television, movies, things like that. But again, here, here's an example that maybe you can give. I had a friend that went to St. John's Academy and graduated. And he wasn't out of high school two days. His father was a doctor, his mother was a nurse, and he shot a policeman. Mm. OK, and that like shocked the whole entire Northeast area, because how did that happen? How just why? Well, you know, the circumstance was he was playing a big boy, you know, with drugs and the police were aware and the policeman, unfortunately, because they were black, he shot the other guy that was with him. And so this guy had no alternative, but just, you know, he didn't want to die. So he shot the policeman. But of course, you know how it got played. But I'm just saying, you know, that was a shock to me, a shock to everybody. You know, how could that happen? You know, he went to St. John's, you know, he was going to college, you know, what, how, you know, but it happened. his whole life was turned around in a, in a, instant, in a moment. Mm -hmm. Just like other children out here their lives are being turned around in one moment. And I don't think they realize the, the gravity of that. They don't even realize it. They, you know, not about survival, it's about being a big man or, or proving who they are or. Mm -hmm. And you told me once that that's part of your motivation for wanting to make this movie was to, to if 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 kids in the neighborhood or beyond the neighborhood um, saw a film like this, they it might humanize for them the victims of crimes like this, and it might make them think twice. You know, when you when you when you take someone's life, when you pull them away from family, loved ones, their community, you know, right. just just how deeply that loss is felt, and might make someone think twice. I mean, before they shoot someone, yeah, it's, yeah. How did you you wrote a poem a few days after after you lost you know a family member to gun violence? For, if you remember this forget we haven't talked about this i don't think for a while but you forgave in the poem you forgave the the, the two young men who had killed your yeah. your son oh, yeah how i mean that's it, it's it's incredible it's an incredible act of forgiveness and and love loving kindness to do that but can you talk more about like your thought process about that i've always been curious uh that has something to do with religion, spiritual. Um, we're taught that only God, you know, has the right or has, can punish. And, you know, of course I had hatred in my heart. I had revenge in my heart. I had all these emotions and I had to, I had to grab myself and stop and say, let me, do the right thing and say let me say i forgive them for what they've done because they don't know what they did for real they really don't and i can't act on my emotions because it will only keep that evil it will give you that evil energy life and it would be no would be no gain in it having a life you know nothing would have been accomplished if um i if the things that were going through my mind if i could have acted out on the things that were going on through my mm -hmm. mind 
you know, um, mm -hmm. nothing would have been accomplished. It wouldn't have made Emmanuel come back and it wouldn't have made Emmanuel proud of me. And it wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have done nothing but made things worse, you know, and it might even made things worse for my grandchildren. Who knows? Because, you know, how do I know that if I had acted on that and I got, oh, I'm going to get this guy, I'm going to get his, I'm going to get him. And then his son grows up, I'm going to get them. You know, that's all it is. It, it, it just, it's a continuous stupid, <laughs> you know, that's the way I look at it. So I said, let me, to, to help myself heal, I said, let me forgive them. Mm. 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 Zach, what, what, uh, that's, be that's beautiful, Cheryl. I mean, that make, it makes sense to me, you know, an eye for an eye makes everyone blind. And, and, and I think you're right. Like healing does come self-healing comes through forgiveness sometimes um zach and I, and i and i don't mean to steal moderating role from daniel from you or from jim i don't it's my it's in my nature i can't fight it so i'm gonna ask one more question then i'm gonna let other people ask questions um okay. uh, but sure. uh but 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 uh zach what are, what are some you know look is in five years uh or six you know filming with the family and just spending time with them what are what are some moments either from the movie that that you remember most that kind of touch you the most when you think about them or or and also things that aren't in, on screen or maybe when the camera wasn't even around that are special moments for example i remember when uh when you gave justin sushi for the first time and he loved it and uh, <laughs> and how, how fun that was but what what are, what are some moments in the film and, and outside of the film that stick out for you in your in your time hanging out with cheryl and her family yeah um I mean, I, over time, I spent a lot more time with, with Justin, just kind of one-on-one, -on -one, just hanging out, playing basketball, and, and just kind of, you know, going to museums and, and doing, doing stuff like that. But I think the... the and anyway, that, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you, because that's the other thing that it ties back to what I was saying at the beginning. My whole... When I did all that with Emmanuel, when Emmanuel was nine, and then it, all of a sudden, you were wandering around the neighborhoods doing that stuff with Justin when he was nine. And that's why it also felt so much like uh, like life repeating itself, I guess. But go, go ahead. Yeah. Well, and Justin, and and Justin also. I mean, I, I didn't know Emmanuel, but from what I know of Emmanuel, Justin and Emmanuel have a lot of similarities. And you know, Justin's just a good, kind-hearted kid who is smart. He's a good brother. He takes care of Faith. He uh, he's just a, a good kid. And so, you know he was kind of like Emmanuel's spirit and uh and but I but I so there's a million little moments with Justin but I think the thing from the movie or the um like the and there's always you know things the smallest thing can can that you don't even know is a big thing in the moment can end up being a big thing looking back on it a year or two down the road just the tiniest little thing and um I think from the movie when he when he in his karate class, you know, we were we were showing with just we we wanted to follow along and see like a day in the life of Justin and what he was what he was doing, what things he was working on, and and his karate class was you know something that he had he had done for a time, and just the little the little and I didn't realize it at the time, but the little moment when he, you know, when they give him his yellow belt and uh, and then he he lifts up his his uh, kind of certificate after he puts the yellow belt on. And you, you know, I was, I didn't, I was just kind of in the camera, but then afterwards looking at the footage, you can see how proud he is in that mm -hmm. little tiny moment. And it still makes me emotional now. Cause he, I mean, he, you can see it like he's proud. And he, he I think he was surprised that he was proud. He was like, <laughs> yeah, I did. It. I, you know, I got my yellow belt and everybody was there. You know, there's probably 50 people there cheering him on, but that's probably uh -huh. my most memorable moments. He's like, tiny, tiny wins, you know, from everyday life. Um, and Justin having such pride in that little, little moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was wonderful. Um, uh, what else? So Davey, how, you, you guys had a th over a thousand hours of footage, right? Is that about where? Yeah, yeah, spanning 20 years, I think so. So how did, you, you know, you could have made a lot of different or taken a lot of different paths with how you chose the footage that you used to condense it to this amount of time. How did you end up choosing these moments like Zach was just, you know, how did you know that those were the moments or, or how did, what was that process? Did you work together with Cheryl and the family? To look at things did you bring were there different iterations that 
that you put together before you ended with the with the one that we see today? Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, I think a lot of it came out of just conversations with Cheryl and also with Smurf and Denise about like what story we wanted the film to tell because there are so many different stories and ca even characters beyond the immediate family, you know, whose lives we dipped into. I mean, there was there was days of just going um, visiting Cheryl's friends uh, in different parts of DC where they lived and spending time with them and and so. Um, you know, there, especially Cheryl had a lot of really powerful conversations with her friends who had also lost children to gun violence. And those, some of those conversations were extremely emotional. It's like pulled you out of the story of the family a little bit because, and, and it, yes, we wanted to widen the scope and make sure it's, it's this isn't just one family to victims of gun violence, you know, and uh, it's in DC and, and that would be a great, there should be a physical memorial, but we tried to do that at the end by having those walls of names. And, uh, and you see, you know, this, you could make a documentary like this if you had the footage for it, you know, about any of these hundreds or more than a thousand young people in DC who have lost their lives and, and since Emmanuel died. Um, but that being said, we worked with an amazing editor named Jen Teixeira. Um, she's incredible. She spent years with us. Um, you know, we, we, I think Cheryl and the Sanfords and I, talked about what stories we wanted the film to tell, but it was really Jen who got in there, pieced it together from the nitty gritty, find discovering footage that Zach, you know, some stuff that you had shot that I had never seen because I hadn't been there. And then some stuff that going back all the way to stuff Emmanuel had filmed in 99 and the early 2000s. And I hadn't seen every piece of footage that had come out of him and Smurf and Denise's cameras. So, so um, you know, it, it was, it, it did take several iterations to get to this stage, you know, it, it took probably four years. I think we, we started editing, you know, just as Zach started, began filming the, the, the family. So um, it's, it, it was a, it, it's been a long journey, but, um, and you could, like you said, you can make many films based on just this footage, right, Cheryl? Yes. Is there, is Cheryl, is there stuff, you're, you're off camera, uh, it's aiming at your wall, there you go. Is it, um, are there are there moments that we filmed that you remember that you think I mean obviously we're gonna find ways to share some of the other I guess you'd call it um, bonus scenes. And I stuff. was thinking about the summer prior to that December, and mm -hmm. um, I, I think I was talking about you came over and I was talking about a girlfriend of mine who had just lost two sons in one week, and one was just home visiting from college his first year from college and the other one um, had a, a motorbike accident the day of the funeral. Um, and I was like talking to you about that because I was like, gosh, you know, um, that's my biggest fear, you know, is having to experience something like that. And I was like telling you about how I had prayed to God and I was like, you know, it was just baffled because this thing hit home. Mm -hmm. but I had discussed this with you and I was like you know and you were filming me that day when I was in the bedroom and I was yeah. and, and we were just talking about different things and I was just sharing that with you how you know I just can't believe you know that that I was feeling that way or having that feeling and I was sharing that with you that I had a feeling like that and I think I was worried about Smurf or something because yes. I was upset what the things that he was doing. And mm -hmm. I wanted you to talk to him and, you know, trying to turn it, you know. So um, I don't know how I got there, but anyway, well, um, that's one time I thought, I thought for sure that would be something that I would end up seeing on screen. And, you know, um, there's lots of stuff that I, I was amazed that I forgot we had done. Um, and the things that, you know, I just, you know, I just, you know, I thought that Jen did a good job because I don't know how she did that through all the stuff that we filmed, okay? <laughs> all the many days of things that they were doing, playing. And I mean, I know she probably got bored too, <laughs> looking at somebody. <laughs> she, loved, but... she, she fell in love with you guys without having met you. That's what was so interesting. She, she And she was able to see the forest for the trees Jim a little better than I think me or Zach or or even Cheryl just because we you know not only well, did we I was did, thinking that yeah 
I was thinking that because of the fact that I talked to you so much, like you were truly one of my children, like my older son. Yeah. And I shared, I, I mean, I, I talked to you on the real about things, you know, yeah. and, I, you know, I didn't hide, you know, I talked to you. I trusted you in a lot of ways and your wisdom as a man. Okay. So, and because of your privileged life, okay but um i felt that um you i just felt that you 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 knew what to put together because of that because of those talk, those talks that you knew me and you knew them you knew sure. the real them and you, and especially emmanuel i mean your bond mm -hmm. with him you know was totally you know it was better than his bond was with her. <laughs> well, know? it's it's easy to, it's easy to be. He was like a kid. Sometimes it's easier to play that role when you're not sharing a space and dealing with you know every day. You know, being able to swoop in and hang out. You know, here and there. You know, uh, so. I was just so proud of him because everything that most children in dc do when they hit high school he did none of that all because of the interaction with you zach and things that y'all you know we did and i that y'all did and i was just i was just so that you know he's gonna be he's gonna win <laughs> you know yeah yeah um, after after Cheryl, after he passed, you you said to me, "Look, we need to do something that's going to change outcomes for for kids in this neighborhood. To, you know, to give them some kind of opportunity just to to see that life, the world's I wasn't bigger just place." Thinking about my neighborhood, I was talking about neighborhood. Period. I was talking about black children. Period. Because even though children are uh, and and black children are, are afforded um, not just low income. Um, parents, I mean, you know, single mothers and things. What I was saying is that even those that have two parents and um, are given opportunities, there are things that are missing that black people just don't do. A lot of black people don't do like camping and those types of things. They just don't have that type of time or opportunity to do those things. And that's something that I felt that the children need to, to have that opportunity it's, it isn't right that you know only one set of people get to do every you yeah. know, all these fun things you know yeah and, no i remember and there's so much out there they never know what's out there because they never get out of the neighborhood you know and, and that, that, that's that I, no, I remember I was that was exactly how you said it to me that you know that as we were talking about it you said like kids are not getting outside the neighborhood they think these things take on extra significance, little silly rivalries and beefs because everything is so focused on the neighborhood. But if they saw the world's a bigger place, and you remembered, I always talked about bringing a manual camping and hiking, which I, which I never did, and I and I always regretted that. You said, well, it's not too late to start. Let's start now. He's gone. Let's start now. There's ten kids on this block that I know could benefit from a trip like that. So we did that the first year. We went from Washington D.C. to Mount Washington in New Hampshire, and we had a, an amazing trip and. Yeah, and you could see it was pretty transformational for these kids. You know, it's just a week in the woods. It's not going to cure all the issues that they're dealing with at home. But it made a big difference in a lot of those children's lives. So you saw that. Yes. I know you witnessed that. We have, and and so and now some of those, those. Yeah, a couple of those particular children that went on that first trip. Um, you know, they've gone. They're graduated from college, and I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, that was something that they would have never even you know just wasn't something they would have done i know that so they would have well, done the norm you know but because of that trip and meeting your friends and people they got to see a different side of life and reality and they decided from that one little trip oh mm -mm. This, i got i got this this is gonna go a little bit different you know and they did they they did and they i was just i'm just so proud of them because i know it's not something they wouldn't ordinarily done i know well every year the trip has grown you know the kids from the first year now they they come along as counselors some of them uh last our last trip we had 60 kids 
from DC, Detroit, and New Orleans. We've added some other cities. Um, it'd be cool to bring some Indianapolis kids at some point. It's something we should talk more about, Jim. And and um, and and Zach's Zach's come on the trips, and and he's he's a great trip leader as well as Smurf and Denise. And you know, it, it's it feels like a giant family camping trip, but we now we have a hundred people uh, on the trip. Some of the kids bring their parents or grandparents, and so we're grateful to Big Car um, for helping shepherd all all those programs through and 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 we're just so glad that washington yeah. washington has kept growing year after year and, we, and we've had a lot of support from people in indianapolis whether they saw the film at heartland um and 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 felt moved to support the camping trips or maybe they're just you know in indiana they're, they're campers and hikers themselves so um it really it really means a lot and uh yeah. you know yeah. to have that kind of support coming from all over the country but but cheryl i really it all it all came out of your that kind of just spark of inspiration that you had so uh, we, we, I appreciate that. Thank you. But, you know, I think we did it as a team. <laughs> yes, a yes, team. we've all done it. And Zach's been a big part of that, too, which has been really excited. And the kids love him. Zach, do you have any special memories from our camping trips, our Washington to Washington trips that, that stick out for you? I know we got to wrap up in a minute, but I'd love to hear. Uh, man, I, I have a million. Too many. <laughs> we, we go swimming, hiking, camping, uh, canoeing, uh, a lot of adventures. We haven't gone bungee jumping yet. No, no, that, that maybe I have to say that for the next trip. Um, but these are things that they normally would, you know, would grow to be twenty and twenty-five and still never get the opportunity to do. Now they've had that opportunity and they know there's more to life than just the neighborhood or the things that they're programmed to to see and do. You know, you know, which is, you know, you know, just get married or let's have a baby, you know, things like that. This is, this, it's just widened their perspective, you know, meeting different people and knowing that th their careers, they see the different careers that are out there. They've witnessed um, meeting children from different places and how those children act and how, you know, it, it's been a great experience for them. It really has. And yeah. I wouldn't trade it for nothing in the world. You know? Yeah, yeah, we've had a lot of a lot of fun, and, and uh, yeah, you know, I think um, I think well, we're excited to be able to finally share the film with people. But but you know, the the, the camping trips are you know are kind of a, they're related in my mind. You know, they're they're related, and we do the trips in honor of Emmanuel. We always talk about how yeah. we feel his presence yeah. a lot on those trips. And that's so. something that touches my heart because a lot of those children don't even know my son, but they've expressed their gratitude and how grateful they are that that we that we engineered this in his behalf and that we we're honored to remember him and they put they put a full for effort just to say something you know in that in that perspective you know saying you know they're sorry he's not there but thanks for you know hope you're looking down on me and i'm having fun you know it, it just makes me feel good when they do that you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Cheryl, for, for joining this conversation. I'm glad for you to meet some of our friends, Jim and, and Daniel and, and, and yeah. some of our Indianapolis friends and, and, and to share your story with them through, through 17 Blocks um, means, means a lot. So this will be a, this will be a continuing conversation. Uh, okay. And the big, the big car family and the, and the Indianapolis community is, has been really special to me over the years. We've had so many great events there going back almost 20 years. Uh, it, I think, yeah, really almost... I, my history with with that Indianapolis community is almost as long as my history with your uh, family. So um, I'm glad to bring these two these two special families together. Well, I'm glad to share it with you. Okay, I hope I get to share it even more. I hope yes. I get to Indianapolis. Well, we we talked about that when we first got on this call. Daniel and Jim extended that invitation. So when 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 as things evolve, aren't there bears out there? Months. What's that? Aren't there bears out there? Bears, Aren't well, there bears out there? I've, I've never seen one in any of the big car um, uh, facilities. Yeah, but, we have uh, a bear free uh, policy there. <laughs> we keep them out. But, 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 <laughs> okay. but so, so when we, we, we do plan to do some traveling with the film and we're working with two great organizations, Every Town for, Every Town for Gun Safety and, uh, and Black Lives Matter DC. And, uh, and we plan to do some screenings around the country it might be next year, you know, but when, when, it, when it's safer to travel and, and bring the film to people, we'll, we'll come back to, to Indianapolis. Okay. 
Daniel, do you want to see if people have questions for us and who are um, watching? I asked, I mean, I personally have a question uh, for you guys. Davey, I know you shot, I mean, you started filming this just out of a, you know, kind of like, I want to capture, I love this family. Was there any, did you always know you wanted to make a feature film with this? Or was there moments in which you're like, oh, I might, it might be episodic. It might be, it might be something totally different. It might be home videos for all of us. Like what was going through your mind in the beginning stages? Or was it always like, I think I could make a really creative feature film with this. I love what obvious beautiful, what you made and to sit with the family for that long is a beautiful way to experience it. But was there any point in which you were thinking about a different medium for this? Um, well, you know, it's funny that, you know, when it first started, I, I had an idea. Of, I had seen a film called Taste of, uh, sorry, yeah, Taste of Cherry by Abbas Kiarostami, Iranian filmmaker. Um, and, and, and I loved all of his work. Uh, and then I saw a movie called Where's the Friend's Home? It's just about a rural town in, in the mountains of northern Iran. And, uh, and but it, it's sort of an exploration of a community, basically. And so when I first uh, started filming with Emmanuel, Cheryl, a lot of it, we, we would act, we, we had a whole little narrative involving him and Smurf and we were, so we would shoot scenes that were actually just supposed to be part of a little fictional film. Of course, very quickly, I grew more interested in your actual lives <laughs> than, <laughs> than in our like pretty, my, like the dumb fictional movie I was trying to make. But what's funny is that I do see in, in 17 Blocks, there are a few shots, not many, but there's a few that actually came from us trying to make this like more narrative film you know um, but but still we as we continued filming it was there was some intent to one day make something with it but there was no plan or you know real clue what that what shape it might take and I just think it changed you know after Emmanuel passed and and you know and Cheryl said you know we need to film all of this you know this is something so common here but you know she recognized you know we had this footage dating back to when Emmanuel was nine and so you know she thought you know we can really tell his life you know which is and maybe this can connect for people in a way that you know it hasn't bef often before this this was yeah yes yes, yes this is the real person this is the real story of of who is lost when things like this happen so um so i think everything changed and from that that point on there was much more intent to eventually you know try to craft a, a full film about uh, the family and emmanuel um, Jim, well, Jim, we got time for one more if you had something you wanted to throw at everybody. I do. I, I wonder if each of you would like to 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 kind of tell us you see the you see the film multiple times, you know, over the years. And now you, again, you'll be there. Are there different moments in the film when you see it that that stick out to you, like a, an image or something, an interaction between a couple of people or just a, a scene? You know what? Maybe what's something that is something that just jumps out at you lately when you when you see it there's something that's like oh man that just really sticks with me mm. well uh, i'll take i'll take a shot uh, yeah yeah that's i certainly notice new things almost every time i watch it sometimes it's at the edge of the frame you know like um maybe it's somebody who i've gotten to know through the years through the through the sanfords you know and they you know, like I know their whole story that, but, but at least just seeing them, you know, in the, in the corner of a, when there's a bunch of people hanging out, it kind of reminds me of their story. But, um, um, you know, I think, I, I think for me, some, a couple of things I've noticed recently are just, uh, I, I, yeah, I would say just the connection between siblings, you know, there's something, I, I have two brothers and um, I, Cheryl knows this, Zach, you know we're about to have another kid, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know if I, well, Jim, I don't know if I told you, but uh, we're, yeah, we're having a second kid. I know you have you have a son and a daughter, so um, I think just and I'm I'm close to my brothers. Seeing seeing uh, seeing just those moments of connection between Smurf, when Smurf, Denise, and Emmanuel are wrestling around and sassing each other and everything as children, you know, and and then seeing Justin and Faith. There's there's a moment when. Uh, He's teaching her how to catch a basketball or something. It's just, it's just such a little moment. I mean, you see it for three seconds, but just think those are the kinds of daily moments that, that um, really um, build a, that kind of special sibling bond. And so, 
the loss, of course, that Smurf and, Cher and Denise have felt, felt um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's relatable to me now. I, I think, and having my own kid, you know, I certainly, it, I understand that loss in a greater way than I ever could have before I had kids, you know, so the, the loss Cheryl has experienced. But, um, but some, anyway, I've been noticing the sibling bonds in just the little moments where even though they, they get on each other's nerves and, and you know, where, where you really just see that love exhibited. Zach or Cheryl, any yeah. any other things that rise up for you recently? I don't know if I have anything specific. It's I think it's not kind of seeing all the footage in the film when it was completed that I had never seen, you know, because there wasn't I didn't have like I couldn't see you know I, I didn't I didn't know the family before I I you know before I guess the last five years of footage, and so seeing all of the footage from before and how it kind of um, just gave it, gave, it, it gave me seeing their full story, even getting to know everybody so well for five years. I think even then getting to know them even better, watching everything in the past, even changed my perception of, of everybody and kind of, and, uh, and I think, so I kind of had a similar, even, even knowing everybody really well for, for a long period of time, relatively long period of time, I still had the same, experiences probably most people watching it where I got to know the family through the film you know that in, in a way that you don't necessarily condensing 20 years down to 90 minutes is a, just a different experience than you know mm -hmm. five-year time period mm -hmm. Cheryl usually when you usually when you point out a scene to me it's because you don't like uh, either your clothes or your hairstyle and from a certain era <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not, that's all the time. But anyway, um, you know, I, I, I'm satisfied, you know, because like I said, um, I never dreamed it would, you know, become this, you know, I just, this, I just never thought, you know, when I said, hey, I want you to film all of this, you know, from, from my personal memory and also um, I, my intention was I was saying like for uh, maybe Boy Scouts or, or um, you, you understand what I'm saying? Just yeah, yeah. Just on just a to share, share it locally or something. I to... wasn't thinking on this this broader scale, but I'm happy that um, especially with everything that's going on in America with kids today, I'm happy because it has a purpose and I have a purpose. It made me mm -hmm. have a purpose. Yes, uh, Desi wants to come is coming to visit. I'll be right back. Desi, come here, buddy. Hey, buddy. Yeah. Anyway, I thought, yeah. hey, buddy, come here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, Cheryl, I really appreciate you, and, and I love you, and I appreciate, you know, how you've, how you've, you know, really you. shared so much in this film, but also, Desi, go around the other way. Go through the kitchen. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and, and also how, you know, you've always seen that this could be a tool for change and maybe you didn't recognize the, how broad the scope could be and how many people we could reach. But I feel like we're also just at the beginning. We're six days in to, to beginning to share this film with, with, with people around the country yeah. and, and, and around the world because the, the, the international release is coming out. It's going to be opening quite wide in France and some other European countries soon too. So, so um, you know, I feel like uh, we're just we're really just at the beginning of, we're at the end of making the film and now we're at the beginning of sharing it and using it to, to make the changes in the world that, that, that you and all of us have always hoped for. So thank you. Thank you. And, thank, and thank, you. thank you. You know, I always wondered. I hey, always Cheryl. The more I, I see, it. the more I see. Hi, Daddy. Hold on. Oh, 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 say it again, Cheryl. I took the headphones out. What? Look. Zach, you got to go. I got to. I got to go. I'm getting pulled hey, up. The door. I got to. How are you? Thank you, Zach. Love you guys. Love you guys. Bye, Zach. Bye. Bye. Tell Kelly I said hi. I will. Thanks. I love you. <laughs> love you too. Um. Mm -hmm. Oh. So Daniel, do you want to tell everybody how they can watch it through CanCan -Can and, and then Davey also, if people want more information 
about uh, Washington to Washington. Maybe yeah. we could share that. Yeah, sure. thanks. Uh, I'll just say thanks everyone for joining, uh, especially Cheryl. Thanks for joining so much. And uh, don't go anywhere, Cheryl. We'll want to talk after this. But uh, uh, yeah, so at cancanindy.com. So it's cancan and then indy.com. We have an on-demand page on our website and you can stream 17 blocks and purchase tickets. And um, part of the share goes to CanCan, Can, which is awesome. Please watch it. If you haven't, watch it twice. Uh, it's such it's so good. It's share it with your friends. Uh, this film I, is very important, especially with what's happened in 2020. So I'm looking at yeah. the penguin. Thank you guys for joining. But um, yeah, and if you guys want to talk a little bit about Washington to Washington. Yeah, yeah. Um, thanks for people checking out the film and uh, and for supporting Washington and Washington. Our, our website is Washington to Washington dot org. Washington T O washington.org um there's a, a video that explains the history of the trip right desi and hopefully desi's going to come on his yeah. first camping trip with us soon mm. and I, I can't watch the TV. okay yeah. buddy so yeah right. uh, and and um yeah so we that, that support really really makes a difference even you know a little bit at a time all goes a long way when we have people helping out from all over so um thank thank you all and, and thanks to big car also for all the amazing support over the years. It's really been incredible. I'm, the Big Car does so much great stuff locally, but they've also just been continuing to build and, and support projects like this um, all over the place and, and really is awesome and appreciated, so. Thank you. Thank you Sarah, for having everybody. me in your life and having mm -hmm. doing it, you know? I've got something I want to tell you about Arkeo. Oh, yeah, I was texting with him the other day, but what's going on? Nothing. I just want it's something okay, that came I'll to talk mind. To you. I'll, I'll talk to you. Okay, he's another one, one of those storylines that he didn't make it into the film, but he, uh, you can see him a few times briefly in the film, but he's he's basically another friend of the family that we've got all been, gotten close with. Right, Desi? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that, Cheryl, for sure. Okay. <laughs> all right. Later. Okay. Love you. Love you. Everybody. Love you. Bye -bye. Love you. Nice meeting Bye. you. Bye, Cheryl. Hey, Cheryl, Cheryl, can, can you hang on for just a second? Yes. Hi. This is Louise Henderson. Hi, Cheryl. I work with Daniel at the CanCan -Can Cinema, and I saw 